Hey, what's up, party people? Welcome to Honest Trailers Commentaries, live from a hybrid version of in-studio and out. Um, <laughs> we are in-studio, but the lights aren't working. Oh, the so. lights are not working. These are just like the house lights? I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. These are the. These are like if we were in the room, but we weren't filming anything, these are the lights that we You know need. what? I sat in traffic to get here, so damn it, we're going to use the studio. <laughs> Danielle wisely stayed home. Hello, yeah. Danielle. How's it going? Hey, hi, doing good. Um, wearing um, my uh, uh, all of my gloves uh, just in honor of the blood sport. Yeah. Um, well, this and is it a bare knuckle me... tournament. The kumite does not use <sighs> protection. No. See, I, they content. would make me look really badass, except that they're galaxy colored for girls. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> I mean, listen. All good. If you haven't been here before, the Kuma taste about your bringing your personal style. Yeah, everybody in. has their own. Everybody true. has. It's well, true. like no, that's not true. Like a third of the fighters have like their own bit, and then the rest of them are just there to get punched. Yeah. Like, if you're just in, guys, if you're just in a generic pair of karate pants, you're getting you're, knocked you're out. You're just there to get yeah. thrown. Sometimes yeah. picked up by your shirt and thrown out of the ring, <laughs> which is not. I don't think that's martial arts. I don't think that's an good actual flopping. Move. We digress. We're going to talk about uh, about blood sport and and other things that may come up in, in the course of that. Um, uh, this move, and we're going to show you deleted scenes. We're going to do uh, um, uh, questions and comments, so so put course, those in the yeah. chat, and then we'll tease you with next week's, which is something that people like are probably talking about more currently than Bloodsport. Um, uh, something I never want. We're going to do talk about it a week from today, and then I hope to never talk about it again. Yeah, that, that's my there's, goal. There's that's your my first, goal. There's your life. first clue. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Bloodsport, where, why are we doing Bloodsport? Because we want to. Um, because this is a great film. Because Lon's ready for the Kumite right here, right because now. we support the Kumite. <laughs> and because there's only like 19 big movies a year, maybe, and 52 weeks in the year. And um, <laughs> Hollywood's slowing down. Hollywood's really slowing down. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's Bloodsport time, baby. Uh, I, I really like this. I find this eminently rewatchable. There is... Um, even though uh, there's no plot, really, besides uh, Karate Tournament, um, Not really. It's just so fun. I just like every, even the the side quest digressions with the cops, the bumbling cops chasing him around, and all this other stuff that could the the reporter love interest yeah. traitorous woman thing that could be cut. <laughs> it's just so fun. I like it all. I think that like today, Phil, it, it, there's so many like lessons on how to become a filmmaker and YouTube, all, all of these launching pads for people to become professional filmmakers. Even student films today have a slickness mm. and a professionalism. But back in the 80s, there was a lot of time where people would just, and like the guy who made the, the, the guy who directed this is a, an assistant director who worked on like Godfather Part 2. So I don't mean to imply that he doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, he knows how, where to point the camera. I'm just saying like there was a handmade feeling to movies that came out in this era that, that we the technology and whatever has improved to make like anybody's work can look kind of slick and professional now. Yeah. But this feels like a group of people got together and just like made a movie for fun. And there's a charm <laughs> to that that is like you can't top really. Yeah, I would say charm is the best word to describe. It's an incredibly charming film. Um, and I saw this as like, I don't know, probably middle school or something. And like, just there is a coolness to it of like, wow, they got all the best martial artists from all the different <laughs> I, countries and they all yeah. have their own kind of martial arts. That's so cool. That is why the UFC exists was to figure out, like do a real life Kumite. Turns out it's not cool. Um, yeah. And 75% uh -huh. of, of them don't work at all. Uh, but this this movie imagines what if it did? What if it was cool? I also feel like this like inspired. I know like Van Damme's in the movie that they made out of the video game Street Fighter. Yeah. But like yes. the video game Street Fighter and our conception in the '90s of what a martial arts tournament even was. Oh yeah. To me is all rooted in this. Yeah. This was my first vision of what martial arts and, was. And Mortal Kombat was going to be a bloodsport right. uh, game. Exactly. So mm -hmm. right. there you go. Um, it's all there. It's all in the text. So let's revisit. This is like the ur text of yeah. like martial arts fighting for like white American kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't look up subtext for this. There is none. No, no, it's no, all, it's super text. It's amazing. That's what's gorgeous about it. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing that they have subplots, but they don't, none of, they don't you really them work completely. or go anywhere. They're just there because you got to have a subplot. It's a movie. They get everything yeah. out of the way in one 11 minute long flashback. Like, well, let's, let's, let's watch yeah, Honest we'll Trailer together. We'll, we'll, we'll get swept away in it. Yeah. Kumite. 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 From Canon, the studio behind the Breakin' franchise. 
the Courtney Cox He-Man movie. Oh, yeah. And the Ninja Cinematic Extended Universe comes a film based on the completely made-up fantasy of a con <laughs> artist named Frank Dukes. And it's f***ing awesome. <laughs> this is exactly how I lie about myself, Pause. too. <laughs> Pause on, that, on those stats. Oh, uh, love it. Love it. I love this. I mean... How? How would you know this? Who would keep these records? Yeah, well, like seventy-two <laughs> yeah. miles per hour. Like, what are they? They got the little, the little they speed got... trap gun by the the side of the the ring, and they're, well, they're the, measuring. Well, the everything. funny thing is, like, he knew that obviously somebody could probably kick that fast or faster in the world, so he had to add the caveat with a knockout, with yeah. a knockout, like in a sanctioned <laughs> in a sanctioned bout, because yeah. surely somebody can kick that fast, but no, it's with a knockout. So, you could. It's so great. Before the internet, you could really just lie. Mm -hmm. Yes, this you is a great just... pre-internet uh, liar, um, Frank Dukes. And then I love consecutive knockouts in a single tournament. If there's 56 rounds in a, ter in a tournament, <laughs> yeah, was, that must that include everybody people. on Earth, I yeah. think. <laughs> if you have a 52-person bracket... He made it to the You're, Elite 800, the, which was really impressive. It was I very think, good. yeah, if somebody does the math on that, I think that's like more atoms in the universe if there's a 56 round. Like, because yeah. the final four, like the, the call, March Madness the starts final, with like yeah. 94, and that's the final like. final 4K. And they have to win like eight games in a row. So if you have to win 56 martial arts knockout it's, tournaments yeah, I it's think... amazing none, none of it really holds it doesn't really make a lot of sense none of the none of the math works out and yet he got away with it for for like decades until yeah. the la times finally like busted it was like well, i read none of this really in sense. sixth grade i read frank dukes's autobiography yeah <laughs> i didn't know at the time that he was a liar oh the secret man is a it was called the secret man by Frank Dukes, um, and yeah. this is something that I need to find again and, and dig up, um, <laughs> because this is a, talk about an er text for me, it was like, okay, this is what I wanna do, I wanna become a ninja. Yeah, I wanna join, one, become ninja. Join the CIA, yes. mm -hmm. and um, I, uh, the, the thing that really uh, uh, put some stuff in my brain is that he, t he tells a story about how he um, seduced a woman on, on a mission by uh, setting off the sprinklers, the fire sprinklers that mm -hmm. like uh, that made her shirt so wet that he could rip it off more easily. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> Don't try that. If anybody watching, just like that, that's just a Frank Dukes move. You can't do that. <laughs> no, no, only Frank Dukes. <laughs> that's exclusively that's Frank like the dim mock, the sexual dim mock <laughs> technique. The sexual dim mock. Yeah, that's brand. That actually only makes the, the shirt harder to rip off if it was like logged with water. I'm not gonna do the <laughs> physics of it. Frank didn't, why should I? Yeah, <laughs> Frank's not bothering to do the action. I just love that, yeah, yeah why for, like, I? for like 50, 20 years, people were like, sure, Frank. And then finally a guy in the LA Times was like, should I look, should look, we look up at any of this? Call the Marines and see if they know a guy named Frank Dukes? They do not. No, they do. Oh, he they, just, right. he just he, never left San Diego. He was in San Diego the yeah. whole time. That's, uh, that's the cover story though. Mm. Oh, yeah, right, of like course. One his like one um, reported injury is that he like fell off a boat that he, he was fell, painting. Like, literally fell off a turnip truck. Like, oh, yeah. gosh, <laughs> no, hit a bump. No. Um, and now, uh, uh, but that was again cover. Sure, uh, right? Because that's that's what they so, want you to think. Um, finally, that would it would like someone should do a confessions of a dangerous mind type. Like, what if yes. Frank Dukes has been telling the truth yeah. the whole time? Like, we've all denied him. <laughs> greatest trick Frank Dukes ever the pulled. Greatest, <laughs> <laughs> but Frank Dukes secretly this whole time has been like the greatest ninja in the world, and we just don't appreciate his efforts. Yes. Oh man, I got someone. Um, well, I, I found the link. I'm going to reread the Secret Man, and next week we'll do a book report instead of instead of next week's yeah, commentary. It, 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 we, I think we mentioned it in the trailer it is hard to, like he not only because in the movie they just call his master tanaka but in the book apparently he calls him tiger tanaka, tiger tanaka. which is the name of the guy and you only, only live twice, twice who trains james <laughs> yeah. bond duke so, <laughs> also based on a true story my my favorite frank duke's yeah. uh, invention there like keep, he just keep stole the bond guy's name what sport Back in the 80s, Arnold and Sly had the guns. Seagal had the chops. <laughs> but only Jean-Claude Van Damme had the cakes. Suit up for what may not be his first credited role, but it's the first time he'll play a martial arts master from America? You're not even trying to understand what this means to us, are you? With the loosest <laughs> hamstrings in the West. That hurts me just looking at it. Great for rocking the splits, bad for keeping the beat. Journey to Hong Kong, home of the well, top so secret underground. Let's talk about just JCVD in general, and I sure. think he's held up remarkably well, save for maybe like 
Schwarzenegger and Stallone, but like compared to Seagal. Sure. Um, well, I don't want to throw uh, Dolph is amazing. Like, but Who as for, love both both JCBD and Dolph are in those uh, that Universal Soldier direct to video sequels, which are amazing, by the way. The last two Universal oh. Soldier okay uh, DTV sequels that they did, they brought back Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren, Scott Adkins, this guy who's going to be in uh, John Wick Four. He's in them. Yeah. Amazingly good. Day of Reckoning is crazy. The last one they did. Nice. I'll it's John that. Hyams, Peter Hyams' kid Ooh. directed them. Okay. Anyway, Ooh. check uh, those out. But I, I d certainly put him above, um, like a Chuck Norris. Yeah. Um, well, because he, yeah. he always had kind of. He's got a little bit more of a sense of humor about himself, and a little bit more, I think, like self awareness about his place in the filmmaking world yeah. than like a Seagal or a Chuck Norris. You know, like. Yeah. I feel like he can yeah. do stuff like a JCVD that sort of sends up his image, or even Expendables, where he's Jean Villain. <laughs> yeah. Like I think he's, he could be fun in a in a role like that, and you could count on him to do like you know he's he's got a little bit of comic chops. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the splits are great, and uh, I mean, what a physical specimen in uh, in late eighties. Uh, oh, I mean, in John Clayton, movie? Damn, Come on. insane. I mean, uh, and like less uh, less overtly roided out than the other ones. Um, I'm sure it was the eighties. There was some, some uh, listen, stuff going but it, on, but, but it looks it, like that looks like a guy who trains all day. He looked like a guy that yeah. trains all day and could do martial arts. Um, you believe he's like doing the splits on top of a skyscraper in downtown yeah. Hong Kong. Whereas rewatching Under Siege, even even Peak Seagal looks ridiculous. He's just like, <laughs> yeah, they 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 often do the 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 chest up shot yeah. for Seagal where he can do a lot of this, but you don't see the body moving, so it's just like just his hands moving fast. So There's yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. Props to Jean Claude. Um, and this set the template for all of his characters. The Quest is amazing. I recommend Ooh. everyone go see the Quest. Uh, kickboxer, a great great dance scene, of course. Sure. And, I mean, this is, but this to me is, is, is. This is the, this is like the, I mean, Lionheart's got some stuff, fun, yeah. uh, fun mm -hmm. stuff and what, Double Team? Yeah. Double Team is amazing. Double, double Team's right. amazing. Oh, double Impact. <laughs> I was thinking of Double Impact where he plays the dual role. Both sensational. Yeah. Track them both down. Yeah. I uh, saw them both in theaters. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. What, what's the one? Oh, what's the one with um with uh, Natasha Henstridge, Maximum Risk that he did with Ringo Lamb? That one's pretty fun too. Oh, all right. My my oh. JCVD watch list. Is and expanding. one more. Yeah. Sudden Impact. The one sudden where impact. Powers Booth is yes. the vice president who gets taken hostage mm. at the hockey arena. I believe oh. at the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, arena. that's a that's that movie. That's JCVD. They remade okay. that He's, recently. It's, it's Die Hard in a hockey Die Hard arena. in a hockey arena. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Which is different. Yeah, they from remade that with um, Michael J. White. And mm. okay, great, great. Yes, yes, they did. <laughs> or it's a sequel, I think. It's not even a remake. It's like Sudden Impact Two or something. Um, anyway, anyway, the fact that there's no <laughs> reboot or sequel to Bloodsport is like good, but also like why didn't they? Or why haven't is they? Is it is it the Frank Dukes thing? Like, if you were remaking this, you'd have to pay Frank Dukes again for his life story and the fact that he's just like a blatant fraud is. I think legally if he's still weird. alive, they should just do it like um, what's that very meta show? Well, that's like, what I'm saying. They should do it like Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Yeah, yeah. You know. All right, we're, we we've cracked it. Uh, okay, keep <laughs> Wait, going. What show were you thinking of? I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> what's the What's the one with the that guy who's a liar? It's like Palty uh, Goldman. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah. That is exactly you. how you should do it. That's not what the show, show. What's the show called? Palty Goldman. It's called Palty Goldman. It's called Palty Goldman. Goldman. Okay. It's on Peacock. It's incredible. Yeah, really good show. Watch it. Okay, keep going. Own fighting tournament known as the Kumite. Tomorrow, we live for the Kumite. I heard you get killed at that Kumite. Like I said, a top secret. You two are here for the Kumite, aren't you? <laughs> when no one will talk about the Kumite. And you can see me fight at the Kumite. <laughs> I'm here, too, for the Kumite. <laughs> a top secret underground. This is the biggest Kumite ever. <laughs> we all know that the Kumite is happening here in Hong Kong. Kumite Express leaves in five minutes. A top secret underground. Someday, I'll fight in the Kumite and make my father proud. OK, forget it. A well-known fighting tournament with its own event staff, flag team, and co-sponsors. International Fighting Arts Association has <laughs> co-sponsor there he'll have to navigate a single sketchy alleyway evade police more easy to fool than an enter your birthday pop-up <laughs> you took a shower i waited you disappeared <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I okay, love this um, this side plot. And uh, fight enough reverse because like <laughs> yeah. the the fiction that Frank Dukes is asking you to believe is that he's so valuable <laughs> to the United States military yeah. that they will like spare no expense if he goes if he's missing. They will send a team to like where they will, uh, you know, co-opt the Hong Kong government and they will do hell, move hell or high water to bring this man back to San they, Diego they because gave, he's that valuable. Yes, yeah, it's yep. Forrest Whitaker and then so I, like a character actor I don't recognize, but they give that that the old guy this incredible beat where he just has to do that. Like if something were to happen to Frank Duke. <laughs> I don't know if America would make it. Like, I don't know what he says, but it's like it's literally like the um, the fate of the United States hangs in the balance. Right. Um, if yeah. Frank Dukes dies at a martial arts tournament, the whole country is screwed. He's carrying like, the world on his hamstrings. Yes, yeah, like yeah. He's the, the the global balance of power relies on America having Frank, Frank Duke shrugged. <laughs> yeah, it's just so beyond. Like it, like professional so athletes, funny. like they're they, it's in their contract that like you can't go snowboarding, right? Because you might hurt yourself. Right. But but they don't like send uh, the Forrest cops. Forrest Whitaker <laughs> with like a really old school taser. Like they've got these tasers. The tasers. But they don't look like tasers. They're these huge. They look like the drumsticks you get in medieval times. They're yeah. like turkey legs, yeah. like this big. It's like the equivalent of like today's cell phones versus an 80s yeah. cell phone it's like today's tasers versus an 80s taser they're just huge <laughs> that's the kind of taser you need to bring down frank Dukes, he could he could just brush off a smaller taser it's like a dinosaur taser it's like <laughs> literally in the jurassic world films the tasers are small yeah they're amazing um we should have done so more great done more taser talk oh well <laughs> yeah. uh okay keep playing <laughs> Racism to fill a two-hour Tucker Carlson rant. Why don't you quit, Round Eye? Teach me. You are not Japanese. <laughs> you Jackson? You look like a Jackson. He's the American sh who makes chicks with bricks. <laughs> you don't look like Tanaka. The Kumite administration wants you to be ashamed of your heritage. Do they make Paco prove he can chop a coconut in half to enter? No. Yet Frank Dukes has to perform the dim mock touch of death technique simply for being Belgian American. Meet Frank Dukes, the inspiration, <laughs> the true events <clears throat> of this film. Sure, the real Frank's military record shows he never left San Diego. He claims he sold his Kumite trophy sword to pirates oh, and yes. no record. That is, that's <laughs> one of my favorite Frank Dukes lies. Is um, They're like, well, Frank, okay, if you went to the Kumite and they awarded you this the, sword for, for winning. We all today. see the grand prize is a, is a, a katana. Yeah, where's the sword? Um... Here's the thing about the sword. So he went to rescue a gang of ch uh, a group of children who had been kidnapped by pirates, as uh, one does. As one does, and he the the pirates had somehow you know uh, cornered him or turned the tables where he was able to sell the sword. Um, a, par as, a parlay, uh, a, par a, par yeah, a parlay, if you will, <laughs> for those familiar <laughs> with, the, with the world of piracy, uh, uh, to rescue the children. <laughs> um, he he successfully brokered the child for the sword for child deal. Yeah, sure. Um, and he <laughs> has, he says that he maintains to this day. Uh, the children maintain an ironclad loyalty to Frank That's Dukes. That's right. Where they He's got would, this army of he kids. He has an army yeah. of, of rescued pirate children yeah. that, that would kill on his behalf. So he can, he can send them out on missions for him on his behalf. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, That's great. And there's no girls allowed. Um, and if Tink starts feeling tired, you have to remember to clap. <laughs> there you go. All right, keep going. Captain Phillips, also based on Frank Dukes. Of his sensei can be found, but he happens to have the same name as a James Bond character. The ninjas were the James Bonds of Japan. Oh, okay. But that's just his <laughs> CIA cover story. <clears throat> as we learn about his life in an 11 minute long flashback slash training montage, that Frank wasn't always a hitman ninja who <laughs> secretly won the Medal of Honor. <laughs> he was once an extremely slow boy <laughs> who got beat up by children. <laughs> Love that kid so much. Yeah. And what was too dumb to know the San Francisco Giants and New York Giants were different teams. Go sports. However, under the highly erotic tutelage of the Tanakas, he'll transform into a shredded kicking machine to honor his master or avenge the dude he just met. Whatever. Frank is just here to kick some ribs and bust some nuts. How is that a legal move? Anything Along goes, for the man. ride are unforgettable side characters like Janice, the love interest and traitor. Because when you only have one woman in your movie, they have to play both. Yeah, Ray, the... just, this, this you're saying is a, is a recurring character in a lot of Jean-Claude Van Damme's, uh, well, just action movies in general. It's the reporter, female sure. reporter. There's like a lot of yeah. lot of female reporter. But then there's also, like, she really does, she fulfills like three different roles in this movie because at first she's like, 
I want to know more about this Kumite. Tell me about Get the me Kumite. into the Kumite. And mm-hmm. then as soon as she finds out about it, she's like, you should never do the Kumite again. This is dangerous and you're going to well, get Well, because hurt. she falls in love. Right. right. She I'm lets in her love heart with you and yeah, like, the, you, yeah. The, yeah. you can't ruin our, our love with the Kumite. And then at the end, she's the traitor who goes to the government and, and reveals the Kumite. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, one woman. <laughs> <laughs> they have to do the work of three men, three all, male roles. All, in, in, all in one <laughs> all in like Backwards and heels. Hours, she has these dramatic changes of heart about the Kumite. What did she think it was before she went? That's, well, yeah, she knows what it is in theory. Like it's a secret, no holds barred fighting tournament. She I gets assume. so upset when she realized, like, she thought they were kidding about the people. Oh yeah, the, the reaction shots yeah. of her at the Kumite are horrified. Like, oh, oh, it's, like, it's the it, this. You, know, you came to see. You came to see a kumite. What did you think a kumite was? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Danielle, were you saying something? Oh no 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 no. Um, no. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Kumites. All right, keep going. I was I was just singing the kumite song to myself over and over again. We have been all week. Yeah. Kumite. Yeah. Other love interest. If you ever need me, I'll be there. I love you, my friend. And waiting at the end of it all is legendary villain Chong Lee, so a fighter who already has his try again pose ready for his Street Fighter <laughs> character. Who's so evil he tastes his own blood. Ah, uh, yes, still evil. Good. <laughs> Haunts Frank's nightmares like a raptor on an airplane. <gasps> Alan. <laughs> Alan. And purposely hurts people in this no holds barred hurting people tournament. Wait, what's the matter, Kumite what crowd? Changed. Do you like Pause. murder or not? Between murder one and murder two. No, yeah. Murder one, they're going crazy. They love it. Oh, Chong Lee's back. Can't get enough of murder. We're here to see the murder fight. Um, he did. He the, gave us exactly what we wanted. What changed? Pitch, the whole pitch for the Kumite is like, me, you might die. It's <laughs> full contact. We don't <laughs> stop the fight before people die. I kind of always felt like the one bit of subtext that is in this movie um, is that, like, <laughs> Frank was so inspiring in the way that he was able to do everything that um, that Chong Li could do, but without resorting to killing, that it mm. made people believe they could be better. There was a better way. Yeah. 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 So he, re- he really, he didn't just win the Kumite. He saved it. He saved it. He did. Oh. Yeah. Some, Kum- minds, baby. some straight Kumite questions. Um, one, uh, the arena change that they do at the end to like make it sort of a half pipe. <laughs> yeah. Why? What, what that wasn't used at all there was it wasn't explained does that make fighting any better why do they do that I, yeah, I don't know. um two tradition i feel like they've just kind of the the kumite in real life they've just backed their way into creating sumo wrestling because if you can win by just pushing somebody off a very small <laughs> stage it's so much easier to just shove someone off a small platform, or in the case of Ray Jackson, or in the case of Ray pick Jackson, them up by the back of their clothing and toss, and, them. and toss them Popeye style. Is it just like an honor thing, or have they just not figured it out yet that it's easier to just shove someone off a small raised platform than it is to beat them unconscious? I feel like it's got to be the honor thing. The honor thing. It's yeah. like mm-hmm. you want to you want to win quickly, and you want to win by like a devastating knockout blow. I just feel like there's like a money ball of Kumite where they could get a guy who's really good at shoving (laughs) and just enter him in there. It's boring, but he keeps winning. He just steamrolled through it. I like the idea of, yeah, Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill at the back of the Kumite arena, you know, like, you know, a guy who could just shove really hard this whole thing. Yeah. Um, That's, uh, what was that movie, Push? (laughs) <laughs> that's, the, that's the movie Push should have yeah. been about. The, a really good shover. Yeah, just a really good shoving. Yeah. Just shoveling. All right, shoveling those are my Kumite well. thoughts. All right, keep going. Enjoy 90 action packed minutes that let also the fighting pause. styles define the character. What's the referee for? <laughs> What's the referee doing there? Yeah. Why the ref? They just use him as a platform to jump off, and, and like, like, he's just there to check the pulse and go. Uh uh-uh. uh, <laughs> like this guy's dead. Yeah. Remind yeah. you to make a bigger face, like right before you go in for the kill. He's like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Okay. okay. That face. was the final Kumite thought. Keep going. Yeah. Fighting styles define the characters. Let's the crazy faces do the Great acting. Faces. Yeah. And let's the sweet sweet music set the mood. Such a good soundtrack. Because the last thing you want out of this film are when they let the words tell the story. Well, I'm just trying to be the best I can be. Not just for me, 
for Tanaka and my Shidoshi too. Go right ahead! I just hope you don't end up like Jackson or worse. So slip into a comfortable pair of karate pants and rewatch the most influential film ever made that's responsible for those early years of UFC before he realized martial arts don't work. Inspired the entire <laughs> Mortal Kombat franchise when the rights to Jean-Claude's likeness fell through. <laughs> fueled an American president's rise to power. <laughs> Mr. Trump, I may not share your politics, but I salute your commitment to making people watch Bloodsport and fast-forwarding through the talking yeah, parts. I, pause. I recommend US... everybody read that oral history of <laughs> so Donald good. Trump's obsession with Bloodsport. Uh, yeah, he he makes people watch the movie on VHS and fast-forwards through the talking there, parts, which are great, too. Yes, I, I will say, potentially overblown, we have a few individual anecdotes of Trump putting on Bloodsport, sometimes turning off other movies that did not interest him in to favor Blood of Bloodsport, Sport, yeah. Yeah. and then skipping ahead to the fighting parts. But we don't we don't really have, I don't think we can say for sure that it's his favorite movie. Oh, come That's on. That's a common claim on the internet. Come on. We have evidence that President Trump, former President Trump, big fan of Bloodsport. Yeah. We can say that with confidence. What would he like better? I, I, I open that to you, commenters. Well, what would he that, like more than Also that great Errol Morris clip of him talking about Citizen Kane. Clearly not his favorite movie. Not his favorite movie, <laughs> but highly recommended also. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine a better fit for what his favorite movie would be, so so let us yeah, know if feels, you can beat that. It feels right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, let's feels wrap like this up. like a roadmap. Yeah. Hey, Kumite, USA, Kumite. Starring. Damn Yankee, Heat Fighter, <laughs> Undercover Bother, Ghost Dog Origins, Sword Art Offline, Apex Predator, Blanca, and these guys with one or two small moments, but boy do they make them count. Mob Guy finding a gold tooth. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, real gold. Multiple Whoa. threatening hand gestures guy. Why is he so shaky? Intimidating. Yeah, it's pretty, it is pretty scary. <laughs> Alleyway laughing guy. <laughs> That's the most moment Kid in the cheering movie. on some bullies in a Bartles and James wine cooler shirt. <laughs> and OK USA guy. OK USA. So good. Frank Dukes has to think about his whole life before he fights a dude. I love this. The, the, it opens with like a flashback and then like a time skip within a flashback. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and a training montage. They're like, let's just get everything out of the way before the just fighting like, tournament yeah, starts. Like real real quick, 15 minutes in, you've got all the play setting yeah. you could possibly need. Yep. Everything you need. Um, thank you all for watching. Thanks for sticking with us through Bloodsport. Uh, I know it's not the most SEO friendly movie, oh, uh, but boy. sometimes you gotta do the ones that we want so we can get to the ones that I guess you want Kang's next week. Kang's not in this. <laughs> so how does this connect to Kang? How does, Where does yeah, Kang, what, is this phase five uh, or six? No Chun Lee is Mephisto. I will also uh, um, <laughs> complain about uh, YouTube and SEO and analytics from, from last week when uh, we posted the Titanic one and it was off to an amazing, like, you know, super good start. Uh, and then we got flagged for inappropriate contact, uh, content because we put the, um, the Rose reclining nude in the thumbnail. But we didn't show any. No, of the, any we of didn't the show anything. No, no goods were shown. Yeah. But we got flagged for inappropriate content oh, because of that man. last week, which is very annoying. YouTube, I really. Come on. Think of, you, you just have to think about all the disgraceful, horrible things that go up on YouTube. That yeah. Are all fine, but a, that a, a tasteful, woman from from this the, part up a, is no good. Ugh, ridiculous. Um. So Kate I guess Winslet's we. Kate Winslet's collarbone. Kate Winslet's no covered up. Uh, uh, decolletage <laughs> flag to flag the YouTube the YouTube scolds the YouTube yeah. woke scolds that won't right. let us uh, put that up there so oh well uh, uh, lesson but learned I guess hour long misogynist rants great oh yeah throw them up oh, we'll yeah. recommend them yeah. throw them top, up top G Adam um, but <laughs> so yeah we'll, uh, 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 we'll, we'll address that going forward no more no more fun in the thumbnail yeah, um, everybody everybody's gonna be dressed like a goody proctor <laughs> <laughs> frocks for the head to toe do you have any outtakes for this one i think we might have a few alternate starrings starring the dukes of hazard more rehearsal soldier nerds <laughs> action jackson jack blackout super trash brothers lois lane brawl guerrera Chong Lee wins. Train Man. Senpai noticed me. 
You are not Japanese. Neither are you, Roy Chow. Hot shots, Park Dukes. Stretch me if you can. Oh, Shido. <laughs> American Ninja Warrior. Fight Club. Wow, a lot of these. Oh, sh <laughs> I'm gonna kumite. That's the best. How do we not <laughs> use that one? I'm just, I, mean, I gotta keep it PG-13 now, I we'll guess. We'll get flagged. I mean, YouTube's yeah. gonna flag yeah. us. But I think that they actually stop, the AI or whatever stops watching after like 18 seconds yeah, or something like that. Yeah, if they don't like swear that. in the first like 15, 20 yeah, seconds, I think you're like good. That. I so, think you're good. All right, now, we'll just, uh, we'll make next week's trailer, oh shit, I'm gonna kumite. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, <laughs> come on. Yeah, that's really good. Sometimes you think of a good one. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on to your comments. Uh, Trevor Copter, how does it feel to be GD Legends for finally doing Bloodsport? Oh, it feels so good, that. man. It, did. it, it feels felt, so good. It felt good, yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, like there are, I really feel like there are fewer big movies these days, um, and that leaves a lot of openings because we've already done every big legacy movie at this point, ten years on. So yeah. we now get to do our favorite movies. It's, That's the new policy. Right. Is, uh, it, it's tough because we the, the most obvious corollaries for everything that comes out. We most of them we've done. We've never now. done Karate Kid, but. We'll, we'll get there eventually. Um, well, when the, the final season of, uh, of Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai yeah, yeah. that would be a perfect yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, expect more Bloodsport, more que more Commando, uh, mm. just the yeah. gems that, I, like... Yeah, I got somebody was saying, like, okay, you've got... Finally, we did Bloodsport. Next 80s classic we got to do is Commando. And yeah. I, I'm inclined to agree. Uh, Jim One says, we'd love to see a Groundhog Day trailer for its 30th anniversary this month, or is it too perfect to really... Sat to? I think that is a perfect film... I have nothing to say except for that about Groundhog Day. It's tough. I mean, I guess you could dig into, like, the alternate versions, like how we know, you know, there was, like, the much bleaker sort mm -hmm. of ending or something. You could talk about, like, that. But, yeah, it's tough to, like, criticize Groundhog Day. It's basically perfect. Yeah. Uh, Adam Halbert, a little off topic, but we'll get back to Bloodsport. Uh, with these overcomplicated new subscription rules that are alienating subscribers, how much longer can Netflix last? Oh. I think it can last forever, but it'll probably cost more and they'll make less they'll yeah. make fewer shows right like i think that there was that wall street uh correction mm -hmm. when they when they finally missed their subscriber targets or they shrank instead of grew where it's like oh okay the free money the free money hose is over uh now you have to show that you can make a business um because they're not profitable or they are they if they are it's very recent yeah, I I, I yeah. think they they can be if they spend less on yeah, making. and that's the only way is spending Stuff. less and charging more. Uh, and they're they're all. I mean, we're seeing this across the board. Every every subscription VOD service, they're all switching focus. They they added subscribers. They've now kind of maxed out the subscribers they can easily get in most big markets, and so now they're going to shift focus on profitability. So yeah, that's going to mean yeah. Somebody's gonna Fewer die. Fewer shows, <laughs> like like Peacock <laughs> or or uh, they'll just keep consolidating. Consolidate, yeah, exactly. Like some, we're some see, will be absorbed. Well, next is almost definitely Stars. Lionsgate is looking to split the Lionsgate Film Studio from the Stars cable network and streaming service, and mm. so once they s separate. Stars becomes a prime acquisition target. Yep. Like somebody would grab mm. that right away, and then oh, yeah. I feel like you know, Stars plus Paramount plus, Stars plus Peacock, yeah. Stars plus Amazon. Like, you know. and there's also this weird sort of analog back to um, syndication, where it's like, oh, uh, like isn't HBO like selling Westworld to Tubi or something already like happened, that? Yeah. Or they already did. So they like, pulled a bunch of stuff from HBO Max, and then they're going to put it on Tubi because they can sell ads on it. Yeah. So the idea mm. is a lot of these catalog shows, if they're not getting watched that much, they're going to be worth, like Raised by Wolves is another one of those HBO shows. So like how many people are really signing up for HBO Max at this point to watch Raised by Wolves? Almost nobody. Right. So it's but if making it was for nothing, free on Tubi, maybe. But if it's streaming on Tubi, you could sell ads against it and you could make money off of that show that otherwise would just be sitting yeah. on HBO Max. Which is the how, Nevers, that Joss Whedon one, that's also on Tubi now as well. Which was how syndication worked where it's like, oh, Seinfeld is on TBS now. Like they're just... It's right. just, just it's making just money every year, money. passive income for all of these. <laughs> it's passive videos. income. It's free real estate. Yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> it's free real estate. It's free real estate. <laughs> uh, Joseph Kaufman, back to Bloodsport. Uh, was there yeah. a martial arts style, fake or real, that you wish would have been represented at the tournament? I feel like an actual ninja would have been cool. Like some real ninjutsu. Like, oh, where is he? Where is he? And then he's like, he's in smoke bomb. He's, yeah, smoke bomb. Oh, he's in the rafters. Yeah. Anything else? Capoeira. I just yeah. want to see breakdancing. 
Yeah. And I think there was sort of well, a capoeira guy. There's a yeah. guy who's doing like monkey style. Like yeah. He's, he's jumping around like, and that's not a real martial art, but I think I read that his his monkey style is very heavily inspired by capoeira. Okay. So he's doing oh, okay. kind of capoeira moves, but making it look like it's a fighting style inspired I think a, by a monkey. A, a, a regular boxer would have been cool, like Balrog in, yeah. in, in yeah. Street Fighter. Um there's a, yeah, that's that's the thing is like that's what's so cool about this and why what it, why it makes a perfect video game is everybody's bringing their own thing, um, which in real life sucks, but in movies, in movies super cool. It's cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you get to see a variety, you know, like it's fun. It's fun yeah. from that perspective. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lowstell says Bloodsport or the exact same movie John Claude Van Damme made eight years later, The Quest. Yeah. I think The Quest is better, but I'd rather watch Bloodsport. I got to rewatch The Quest. I, I do remember loving it, uh, so I, I think I actually liked it more on first viewing. But I've seen Bloodsport so many times that it's like, oh, here comes this part. Uh, yeah. So I got to rewatch The Quest for sure. Love both, but I think it's the same thing I was talking about, where it's like the quest feels more like a studio movie, like a real movie, mm. a movie, a real like movie a movie, film. like you go like see a, a, film a movie. you go go to a theater and see a movie. <laughs> but uh, Bloodsport has that handmade. A bunch of friends got together and made a movie charm that I don't think the quest quite yeah. has. Uh, we'll close with this from Evan J. Pretzer. If you could put Al in the Raptor in any actual movie to make it better, what would it be? I say mm. Fifty Shades. Now are we. Uh, I imagine this is like a dream where a raptor says the protagonist's name. Are the, is that what makes it the Alan Raptor, or is it just like adding a raptor? I mean, either, I I say, either way. Alan the Raptor is a dream creation. Yes, uh, he's, he's having a nightmare about going back to yeah. dress. So what Park. movie would you add a nightmare about uh, where a raptor says your name? Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, God. Uh, well, I guess Wait, that's our show. Is that our motion sensors, or did we just lose lights entirely? Oh, motion sensors. Well, Lon, get up and move around a little bit. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like around the corner, I think. Oh, it, it's, okay. The sensor's over by the door. Okay. <laughs> hey. My screen's frozen, so I can only hear what's happening. Oh, got it. Got it. So, hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, thank you. Terrifying. Uh, yeah, what, what would we put a, a, a dream of a, rap, of a nightmare raptor in? Uh, I, I, a recent film I, I watched recently that they could definitely have used a Nightmare Raptor, Skinamarink. Skinamarink, like yes. Like in one of, the, one of the rooms in the Skinamarink house, suddenly there's an Alan Raptor yelling yeah. the kid's name. Kevin, I think is the kid's name in Skinamarink. That's good. Um, that was good. I think like a, like a taut uh, thriller like a, like Michael Clayton. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's just to break yeah. up the tension. Tilda like Mike Swinton falls yeah. asleep at work. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Michael. <Yeah. laughs> he wakes up. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Michael Clayton. Danielle, what are you putting Raptor in? Um, I think uh, Gone with the Wind. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who's, who's Dream? Is it Rhett or Rose? Uh, oh, I think or it would have to be like Scarlet. Scarlet. It would have to be Scarlet. Yeah. Scarlet. Yeah. 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 Red or Scarlet. And so the Raptor yeah. says Scarlet. S yeah, Scarlet. Scarlet. Yeah. <laughs> and has a little mustache. Okay. okay. Yeah. One, one more. Uh, I feel like Lady Gaga, House of Gucci, if she had a dream yeah. about a raptor saying her name, would have been really good. I could see that actually fitting into that movie. There you go. All right. That's all for Bloodsport before they fully cut the power on us um, <laughs> and make us go home. Yeah. Um, kicking and screaming. Jeez. But uh, we just don't want to talk or think about next week's honest trailer. Um, that's your clue because <laughs> it's been done. Okay, so uh, you know how in TV shows when <laughs> they're making a TV show and then a character shows up, you know what always happens? This. This. Fuck. All right, see you next week. <laughs> I want to die. I want to die. <laughs> <laughs>